All right, let's get into story time. I really don't talk about stories like this. I really don't bring a lot of stuff up on this channel revolving or involving you know, racism, race, stereotypes, things like that. But it's something that, guys, I deal with it pretty often. And living in the South and when you kind of step out of that magical circle, that imaginary circle of the metropolitan area, things get different. But it's not just being in the South. It's been all over. I've encountered it. But I don't talk about it. You know, it used to bother me like crazy. Like it just used to get me fired up. But I've just used it as more inspiration to do better, to make sure I'm always on point. But this one story, it was a bit of an eye opener because this person we had rapport. You know, this was someone that we had a mutual associate. So it's like, hey, you, you know me, right? We're not chummy chummy, we're not friends, but we have at least rapport. So you guys know I'm in real estate. A lot of times it's meeting people. You may talk to a person on the phone, but then you may not see them for quite a while until, okay, you got to go see a property. And this was the case for this story where we're on the phone, you know, communication, setting up dates, things like that, but didn't have a real clue of what I looked like. And the way I speak is something that when people, I've gotten so many, oh, you speak so well, you speak proper, you you speak white, you don't sound like a black guy. I've heard it. Sometimes people are trying, they think they're giving me a compliment, but it's blatant disrespect. I've gotten it for my whole life, basically, right? And it's like, I don't, I speak well, I speak pro proper. No, I'm just speaking English. I'm just speaking, I'm just talking. Why does it have to have this so well, this proper, like, no, I'm just speaking. So anyway, back to the story. We're on the phone numerous times, going back and forth, setting up dates and what type of property I'm looking for, things like that. So the agent finally meets me, all right? And okay, hey, how you doing? Good to meet you, all of that good stuff. Get inside the property. And then I guess he just couldn't take it anymore. He was just like, look, I, hey, I gotta let you know something. You know, on the phone and then now meeting you, you know, I wasn't expecting you to be the person that would come out the car. I was like, here we go. Now, the old me would have been ready to flip out and all this. But I wanted to I wanted to see where his mind was at with it. Can you imagine that, guys, though? Like, let, let's let's think about that. Let's think about that for a second. We're doing business here. This isn't we're meeting up, you know, to have, you know, sushi or something like that. We're meeting up to do business. Right. And the initial introduction and then it goes to, hey, I wasn't expecting you to come out of the car based on how you sound on the phone. And you like, what are we talking about? Like that. And then basically, yeah, he goes on to say, I thought you were going to be a white guy. Now, at the time, and I should have, I should have checked it right there and just really just ended the whole meeting. But I'm just, I was just like, let me put it to the side. And this was shame on me. This was shame on me because at that moment, I'm just, I was so more focused on the deal than my respect and shame on me for that. Eventually, I made it clear, like, hey, I was not, you know, I, this was highly disrespect, disrespectful. I felt completely disrespected, and I would like to just cut ties with any future, you know, meeting your company, your business altogether. And then what happens? That's when the calls come in, the text messages come in, because this mutual person I, I mentioned earlier, he told that story to that person, and even that person was just like, what are you doing? What are you, you're stupid. But yet, even though... It was told he was in the wrong, even though, hey, that was dumb. No apology, no text, no this, no that. When now you're not going to get any money from me. Now it's a bunch of apologies and text messages and, hey, I'm calling not about business, but as just two men speaking. Whoa, 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 whoa. If you already knew that this was wrong, this was blatant disrespect, because that mutual friend told me that. 
like, hey, I did let him know that that was just completely dumb what you did and so forth and so on. And yet, no, because it wasn't significant enough. My how I felt wasn't important enough. It was of no significance. But now now you're not going to get the money. You're not going to get the deal. Oh, here comes the apologies. Here comes this. Here comes that. Here comes the numerous calls and numerous text messages. And it was just even more confirmation. But these are the things, when you talk about the driving force, what keeps me just inspired just to keep going and to not falter. Why I always tell you guys to be on the best version of yourself always. It's because of, excuse me, it's because of these experiences that I deal with. Not occasionally, consistently, normally. That was just one of many, many things, many stories. But can you imagine? And this is, I'm so accustomed to it that I'm, I'm numb to it. But all my life, it's been, oh, you talk different. You talk this, you talk that. No, I just speak English. But see, this is why I'm always doing, and I tell people, have that checklist before you step outside. Because look, I'm not going to be naive also. I'm a bald head, tatted up dude. I know what box people will tend to put me in. But it's my responsibility every time I step out of this place, anywhere I'm at, anywhere I go, my responsibility that whatever narrative, whatever negative connotation you might want to associate with me, I'm going to eradicate all of that. And it starts with you. It starts with me taking accountability on yourself and your actions and what you do. I'm just, excuse me, I'm shaking this table. It's taking the accountability every time, every time, every time on yourself. It starts with you. That's why these videos I'm always telling you guys, set your bar higher. Set your bar higher. Be the best version of yourself every day. Because this is what I tell myself. This is what I do every day, every waking moment because of situations that I run into like this. And I, this guy, this is one of, I can go down the list of stories and how it just, sometimes it just gets like, oh my goodness, just give me the shit. Just give me a fair shot. But yeah, constantly the voice thing and how I speak, that's just, that's a nice story in comparison to what other things I've encountered and endured. But I don't talk about it. I don't bring it up. I think sometimes when it really gets to me, when it really bothers me, it's when I encountered it from people I would consider, hey, maybe a friend, thought I was a friend, or at least a close associate, and they would make a comment like that or something like, I don't even want to get into it. That's when it's like, whoa, that's when it hits me because I'm like, wait, but you know me. Why would you? We're, we're friends. Like, we're, we're cool. But that ideology is still stuck in your head? Okay. What else is, then what's the ideology of someone who doesn't know me? Who are showing me a house for the first time but didn't know the way I looked? It's rough. You know? And... I know people who've encountered similar situations. And this is why I just say, hey, 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 I know how you're feeling. But just lead with success. Lead with your results. And then, and I did, right? So, okay, we're not going to do business ever again. I could have put you on blast, shown the email. I'm sorry, shown the text message, played the voicemail, put X corporation that you work for, company that you work for, and done all these things. But I didn't because I'm going to still lead, still go on a high road. And okay, we're not going to do business. And you know what? I'm glad I learned now this is how you feel or these are your views. Now, as opposed to we get later into the deal or multiple deals or later deals down the line, and then now the true colors come out. And then what happened? Okay, I moved on, found a better agent, found a better deal got a better place that I was truly, truly wanted, and we're good. But it's stuff like that. 
But it's like, okay. Don't fall into that stigma then. Don't fall into that category. Don't fall into that stereotype. But it's going to start with me and what interactions I have. My little radius of interactions and meetings with people, content, things like that. I'm going to disrupt that narrative. I'm going to disrupt that stereotype. I'm going to shake things up. So I wanted to leave that with you guys and kind of share that with you guys. Just to really, I don't even know why I wanted to just share that with you, but I just wanted to share that it's not all peaches over here. It's not all sweet over here, but that doesn't mean I, I'm going to drop the ball. It doesn't mean, okay, don't do anything silly that now confirms whatever stigma or stereotype X person might have. So I just want to leave that with you guys. More on the way.